Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Shows. Today we're catching up with part two of The White Cat. And in part one, we saw a king, not really about to die, but feeling older, decides that the best thing to do to keep his sons from trying to oust him from the throne is to send them off on an adventure. And whoever brings him the prettiest dog, well, they'll become the next king, whether he be the oldest or the youngest. And so we're following the adventures of the youngest son as he hunts for the most beautiful little dog. And where we left him, he had discovered a castle that he had never known. And at the castle, well, it was very richly appointed, at least on the outside. And that is where we leave off. The young prince staring at a deer's foot hanging by a thread of diamonds. This is The White Cat, Part 2. They must feel very secure against robbers, he said to himself. What is to hinder anyone from cutting off that chain and digging out those carbuncles and making himself rich for life? He pulled the deer's foot, and immediately a silver bell sounded and the door flew open. But the prince could not see anything but numbers of hands in the air, each holding a torch. He was so much surprised that he stood quite still, until he felt himself pushed forward by other hands, so that, though he was somewhat uneasy, he could not help going on. With his hand on his sword to be prepared for whatever might happen, he entered a hall paved with lapis lazuli, while two lovely voices sang, the hands you see floating above will swiftly your bidding obey. If your heart dreads not conquering love, in this place you may fearlessly stay. The prince could not believe that any danger threatened him when he was welcomed in this way, so, guided by the mysterious hands, he went toward a door of coral, which opened of its own accord, and he found himself in a vast hall of mother of pearl, out of which opened a number of other rooms, glittering with thousands of lights, and full of such beautiful pictures and precious things that the prince felt quite bewildered. After passing through sixty rooms, the hands that conducted him stopped, and the prince saw a most comfortable-looking armchair drawn up close to the chimney corner. At the same moment, the fire lighted itself, and the pretty, soft, clever hands took off the prince's wet, muddy clothes and presented him with fresh ones made of the richest stuffs, all embroidered with gold and emeralds. He could not help admiring everything he saw, and the deft way in which the hands waited on him, though they sometimes appeared so suddenly that they made him jump. When he was quite ready, and I can assure you that he looked very different from the wet and weary prince who had stood outside in the rain and pulled the deer's foot, the hands led him to a splendid room, upon the walls of which were painted the histories of Puss in Boots and a number of other famous cats. The table was laid for supper, with two golden plates, and golden spoons and forks, and the sideboard was covered with dishes and glasses of crystal set with precious stones. The prince was wondering who the second place could be for, when suddenly in came about a dozen cats, carrying guitars and rolls of music, who took their places at one end of the room, and under the direction of a cat who beat time with a roll of paper, began to mew in every imaginable key and to draw their claws across the strings of the guitars, making the strangest kind of music that could be heard. The prince hastily stopped up his ears, but even then the sight of these comical musicians sent him into fits of laughter. What funny thing shall I see next? he said to himself, and instantly the door opened, and in came a tiny figure covered by a long black veil. It was conducted by two cats wearing black mantles and carrying swords, and a large party of cats followed, who brought in cages full of rats and mice. The prince was so much astonished that he thought he must be dreaming, but the little figure came up to him and threw back its veil, and he saw that it was the loveliest little white cat it is possible to imagine. She looked very young and very sad, and in a sweet little voice that went straight to his heart, she asked to the prince, King son, you are welcome. The queen of the cats is glad to see you. Lady cats, 
replied the prince. I thank you for receiving me so kindly, but surely you are no ordinary pussycat. Indeed, the way you speak and the magnificence of your castle prove it plainly. King's son, said the white cat, I beg you to spare me these compliments, for I am not used to them. But now, she added, let supper be served, and let the musicians be silent, as the prince does not understand what they are saying. And that is part two of The White Cat, in which we finally meet the White Cat. A queen of cats who lives in a castle decorated with the stories of other famous cats, including our very own Puss in Boots. When next we join the story, we'll go to dinner with the prince and the white cat. In the meantime, this is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you'd like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you'd like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>